Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Sierra Ryan, the founder of Botterra AI, and today I will be walking you through how to build out a real estate chatbot using VoiceFlow with a built-in property recommendation system. If you wanna have access to the templates you can follow along today, you can access that in the description below. But to start, we're gonna do a quick demo, and then I'm going to walk us through step-by-step -step how this chatbot works. Let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in the demo. Um, if I didn't mention this before, we are using VoiceFlow for this chatbot today. Um, it's my favorite chatbot builder. I highly recommend it for anyone else who's looking to build bots or start their own agency. Um, so we're just going to jump right into this. Uh, it's going to basically welcome the user, say hi, welcome to Botterra Real Estate. Um, and this chatbot has four main functionalities. It has the help me find a home functionality, which is a property recommendation search. Um, I basically made an Airtable database with a bunch of homes from Zillow, like over a thousand. Um, and we're utilizing that um, in my local area. It has all of those homes. So the user can basically type in the type of house they're looking for, how much they're willing to spend, and it'll output all the houses that match their query. Um, then we have, I'm looking to buy a home and I'm looking to sell my home. Uh, these basically do the same thing. They're a lead capture that then see, sends the lead to either your email or maybe like a database or your CRM. And then lastly, we have, I have a general question, which is just basic FAQs. But to start, we're going to go ahead and do the property search. Um, so tell me about what house you're looking for in Boulder, Colorado area. I'm going to say uh, I need a four bedroom, three bathroom house for, oh, look, it already, already auto-filled between 500 and let's say 700,000. Awesome. And we're going to send that in. It's going to think, send that Airtable API request. And boom, it's going to output some properties right here, which is great. When you click on these, it will go ahead and take you to the actual property, which is really nice. Um, I really like that. Uh, typically for like an actual real estate agency, you won't have as many houses to add to a database as like a thousand. Um, but if you're wondering how I got all of this data to put into this chatbot, there is something be called bright data that I use. And if you go to make an account, go to their web data and go to their web collections, you can just type in Zillow and they have a whole database of literally every single Zillow listing that is on Zillow right now. And you can customize it and filter it. So you can say where, what city, and you could say is, and we can say Los Angeles, and it will give you a subset of all of those properties. And for if you're making a demo for someone or something like that, um, it will allow you to download basically like a sample CSV. So you don't have to pay for all the data. If you want to, you can um, to get access to all of it. But if you just want access to like a few thousand properties, you can just download the sample CSV. Um, and then what I did from there is I went to my Airtable database and I imported it. So you can click like the import button or create a new database and just drag and drop the CSV that you just downloaded into here um, so that you can make um, some really good demos or just build this out as a project. Um, and I will be providing this database in the description below. If you don't wanna go through that process, um, I will be providing this in the description below so you can get that there. Awesome, so then we can go into something like I'm looking to sell my home. And it'll basically just capture like first name, your email, everything like that. And it'll send this information to your CRM. So now that we have that in mind, um, that's super basic stuff. I'll walk us through this in the actual tutorial. And then we just have the, I have a general question section, which is again, also super simple. I can ask like, what does your agency do? Something like that and it'll just spit out something super simple. I prompted it to keep it really basic um, because I've been training this on the data of like another agency. Um, but yeah, it's super duper basic answers. You can make these as elaborate or not as you want and I will walk us through that in the demo. So now we can head on over to the actual chatbot. Um, and I have a interesting structure of organizing mine. I really like to organize them in just a separate intents. I know a lot of people just like to build out their chatbots just on one big um, page. I do not like to do that. It looks very unorganized and cluttered. So um, we have our home page right here, which is just the start. 
and we have a uh, welcome and then buttons that say help me find a home blah 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 that lead to these intents that I've set up over here. So to start, we'll go over to the property search intent. And this is a little bit more complicated. And keep in mind, this template will be in the description below. And um, I will be giving free access to my templates uh, if you use the discount code that will be in the description. Pause the video, go ahead and download that, get that into your voice flow so we can do this together. Um, but we're gonna start with a block that is asking Basically, hey, tell us about the property that you're looking for and give an example of a question that they kind of ask. And um, then we're going to capture that as a last utterance. So that would be a capture block, which would be right here. Let me just drag that over. Then we're going to go up into here and we're setting the user's query as the last utterance and we're applying it to AI question. Basically, we're just changing what the air variable is called so that it's no longer just the last thing the user said and that it's actually stored as their question. Um, so that there's no confusion um, with that. Then it's going to basically check to see if they're actually asking a, um, a question related to a property search. And if they are, we're going to head up in here into the Airtable request. Now, this is very important. And I actually want to give a shout out to Brendan with Inflate Agency for building out a lot of this system. I've changed some of it, but for the most part, he um, built out a lot of this. Um, we need to set our Airtable URL. This is the URL to my Airtable database that I just showed you all here. Again, you'll be able to access that. Um, and I'll walk you through how we get there in a moment. Um, but you'll need to make sure that you get the URL. Again, I will walk us through that in just a second. Then we're going to have another block, which is setting a variable to the number of responses. This is important. I limit it to four. Um, if you say 100, um, the chatbot, for one, is going to take a really long time to output its responses, and two, will probably output an overwhelming amount of responses, um, user tokens for no reason. So I just recommend using five or less, and that basically just means that at max, the chatbot's going to output four um, properties. It won't output more, but it'll output somewhere between one and four properties. Then... Um, we are going to convert the user's AI question, and remember that AI question was what they had said right down here, what they're asking. Um, we're converting that into an Airtable query. Uh, so honestly, the most important aspect of this is the prompt, the system prompt. You need to make sure that your system prompt is like really detailed and helping the chatbot like understand, okay, this is what I need to make. These are the different variables that things are stored in and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to go too detailed in this. But again, you can get the template, which will come with this system prompt, and that will help make this a lot easier for you. You can change it however you need to. And again, we're just setting the variables for the prompt. Um, we're applying that to the Airtable query. That is another variable that you need to make sure you make. Um, and then we're converting that into the um, query, as I mentioned. So if the query contains no valid query, which in the prompt that we created, um, it should have basically like, if you don't know the answer to this question that the user asks and you can't make it into an Airtable query, just output no valid query. So this is just checking to see like if the chatbot was not able to make a query for the Airtable database, we're just going to mark it as null and say that the query had an error and we're going to tell them what the Airtable query was. Awesome. And then lastly, we are going to perform a... Okay, and lastly, this is very, very important. We are going to send a GET request to Airtable. So we're going to have to make a API block, which you can find that here under dev. Sorry, not JavaScript. Dev and API, and you can drag that over. I already have the block there, so... We're just going to walk through this. Make sure that you set it to make sure that we have this API set to get because we are getting information from our Airtable database. Um, if you notice up here, we set our Airtable URL in the variable Airtable URL. So that's going to be stored here. Then we just kind of have some like um, aspects of the URLs that are between this um, that we're just going to autofill. And then we're going to set max records to the number of responses, again, limiting how many outputs it comes up with. And then lastly, we have this filter by formula here, which is going to be set to our Airtable query. So to give you a better understanding of what exactly this Airtable query is, I'm actually just going to walk through and make us a preview. I'm going to say I need a four-bedroom 
house. Just generate this really quick. And this is what an Airtable query looks like. So this is what we're sending to Airtable to determine what we're trying to pull from the database. If you're curious what exactly I meant by that. Um, so again, that is gonna basically be the filter by formula is gonna be what I just showed you, that little Airtable query. Um, that variable will be put right here so that it knows what it's searching for. <clears throat> now, right here is really important in the headers. Um, you're gonna basically just press the plus sign um, and go ahead and put in your bear and then like just for now we'll store this as a, a variable but we'll say API key before we can just call this authorization so um, right here is where we're going to put our API key so now is the part where I'm going to walk us through where we're going to find this API key and also our Airtable URL so <clears throat> you're going to have to go into Airtable and up here in the top right if you press on your name, you can go into Developer Hub. Now, I've already made a couple of um, keys, but if we want to create a new token, we can call this Real Estate. And you want to go through and press plus on all the scopes. So go through and add every single scope. And then you want to select which database it will be accessed. Go ahead and press this plus sign and just go down to Zillow property listings information. Great. And then just click create token. And then I'm going to blur out mine, but you're just going to copy this clipboard right here and press done. And that's when you're going to go back into your um, API call and paste it right here um, next to where the bear would be. Um, I'm just going to say blah, 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 would be my API key. And that is totally fine. Awesome. Um, then to find your URL, you can just go into, my apologies, back home and go back into Developer Hub and go to Developer Docs. Once we do that, you can press um, API Docs under Web API. Click that, and then my database is called Zillow Properties Listing Information, so we'll click on that for the API ref reference. And now we're going to be right in here. You're just going to stay here. The first text that you see under this example, we're just going to copy from HTTPS to right before this slash imported. Do not get the slash included in there. This is where we need to copy. So what I just copied right here is the information that we need and we're going to go back and again paste that URL right here make sure that it is inside of these little single quotations um, and that will have you set to run this um, next walking into this is a little more detailed um, this is just some code that's basically setting um, variables for the output that the API request came up with um, I'm not going to go super detailed into this because this video might be a little longer than I'd like and then and than you'd like. So um, I recommend that you just copy and paste this into ChatGPT, ask it what exactly it means. Um, really, the most important aspects of this are these right here. If you change um, your Airtable database like column names, you'll have to change these as well. So just know that. Um, and honestly, like I said, paste it in ChatGPT, spend some time just looking at it and trying to understand uh, what it's doing. You don't really need to know how to code to look at this and understand what exactly it's doing. But again, I recommend that you put that through ChatGPT. And then again, these are some other important code snippets that are taking the code here, the variables that we made, and setting them to new variables right here, which we will then output in our chatbot. Um, as these variables like address one, price one, and bedroom one. So as we mentioned, we set our um, number of outputs to four. So that's why these are there are four blocks here. Um, that's the reason that there's four blocks. And each variable is basically named in accordance to the number of block it is. So the first one or the zero index just has no number in front of it. The second one would be one. The third one would be two, so notice all the variables have twos in front of them. 
and the last one would be three. So all these have threes in front of them. Um, and basically that's just gonna break down the information into variables. So then we can put them into the cards over here. So what we just stored as the variable for address one, we can just put in this title here as address one. And then price one, bedrooms one, and bedroom bedrooms one, and bathrooms one. Again, we're storing as variables, so we can output that in the description of each card um, so that it's pretty responsive and just basically outputs whatever is in the variable at that moment. So I know that was pretty complicated. Once again, you really don't need to know how this works. All you need to know is that you need to set your Airtable URL and you need to set your API key. That is it, and this should work just fine. Um, so if you do not care, do not understand these aspects of this chatbot, that's totally fine. You don't need to know it, um, but sometimes it's good to understand just in case you're facing some errors. Um, I will say this block right here, if the address is set to zero, which means that no queries got through, that there's no variables stored in here, there's basically no information that it has to um, make cards of and output, it will send you back with an error and make you start over again. Um, I have noticed that a lot of the times the reason for this is that you haven't actually defined variables for these. So for address, price, bedrooms, um, address one, ad address two, price, bedrooms, all of these, you need to go to content and you need to make variables for them. So notice how I have a variable for address one, address two, address three, and I have a variable for bedrooms, bedrooms one, bedrooms three. You need to make sure that you have variables for those because um, typically that's why um, you'll get this error right here. Awesome. So next, we're going to just jump into lead capture. This is super duper simple. Um, it's going to be basically the user says that they want to give their information. We're going to get their first name stored in the variable first name. We're going to get their email stored in the variable capture it and stored in a variable email. And then we are going to post it to our um, our like CRM or our Gmail. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth in this um, because a lot of the detail in this really was dedicated to this recommendation system. Um, but again, take the template and everything will be pretty easy for you. I'll be making more videos on how to like connect to your CRM as uh, like HubSpot, Salesforce, etc. But for now, I'm not gonna jump too much in detail on this because really you just have to fill in a couple of things. And then it's gonna basically say if it was a success, we'll say thanks, we'll be in touch. And if it's a fail, it'll just basically have a fallback saying please email um, our company email. And then we have our FRQ, which is even more simple. Um, just saying, sure, what would you like to ask? And then we have a AI response block. Um, you can have it respond from the AI model that you choose. Typically, that would be like Claude or GPT 3.5, or you can have it respond from your knowledge base. Um, I will have it respond from my knowledge base because I'm going to train this chatbot on information from the real estate agencies. Um, but if you want it to respond from an AI model, that's totally fine. However, if you did take the time to build out a knowledge base, make sure that you click the data source is a knowledge base um, so that it actually pulls from that data. That concludes our video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want the template that I was just using, you can check out the description below and I'll have a link to that. Additionally, there'll also be a link to the Airtable database. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what videos you wanna see next. And thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.